to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The ability to become like Christ in experience through sound communication, sound exegesis of doctrine, is how believers metamorphose. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. There are many spirits, but the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The next verse says, but we all. So this is an experience for all, not some. We all, with faces unveiled, it says, we behold him as in a mirror. We are changed from one dimension of glory to the other, even as by the Spirit of God. Transformation. Are we learning already? Yes, this is very important. Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech thee, brethren, he's speaking to brethren now, by the mercies of God, that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God. He calls it holy and acceptable. And then he calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Comes from the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that is associated with this age. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to prove that good perfect will of god transformation and it comes through a sound exegesis of doctrine you see when the word of god is communicated backed up by the anointing of the holy spirit it sustains the ability to correct perceptions it sustains the ability to correct mindsets are we together now yes a house like this and a conference like this should be a feast of light. John 1 5, he says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It takes light, spiritual illumination, to the point that Paul, when he was mentoring the church in Colossae, chapter 1, Colossians, and verse 9, he prayed, crying to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the church would access three dimensions of knowledge. Number one, the fullness they be filled with the fullness the knowledge of his will number two they be filled with all wisdom wisdom is dimensional and that they be filled with all wisdom number three they be filled with spiritual understanding the major challenge for most believers is ignorance philippians ephesians 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart so an encounter with the word like this is an opportunity to feast on the light of god are we together now Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, when you read, it says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not the knowledge of what they want, the knowledge of the keys that it takes to translate prophecy into experience. Are you learning now? Thank you. Please do pay attention and understand this. It is important. You must, you must make up your mind that you will evolve spiritually to a superior version of yourself that is now able to handle the things of the kingdom with power. The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. But the tragedy is in the next verse. It says, You shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. 
So we must obtain grace from God. When he was speaking in the book of Acts, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. I hand you over to God, then to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And then he says to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Say light. Light is very powerful in this kingdom because we rise on the strength of the level and the extent of spiritual illumination that we have. It takes more than a sincere desire to excel in this kingdom. Are we together? Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. This is very important. Light. Psalm 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, it says, Shine, for thy light is come. Isaiah 60, I meant to say, Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, it says, Shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amplified says, Arise from the prostration and depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. He says, rise to a new light. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Listen, transformation is very important. The Bible says, an heir, for as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave. That means his experience will still be like one who is not in the faith. So number one, encounters. Number two, transformation. The third thing we must, you, you won't believe that I'm just introducing myself. Hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. The third thing that we must experience in an atmosphere like this is that in every gathering that is God ordained, there must be an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to find expression in the midst of His people in miracles, signs, and wonders. This is true. John chapter 2 and verse 11. The first miracle recorded according to the synoptic account of John. The turning of water to wine. The Bible says, this beginning of miracles. That means it did not stop there. This beginning of miracles. Did Jesus in the Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory. Why? To the end that the disciples would believe on him. The faith life that we've been called into is a dimension of spiritual reality that can be provable, can be proven here and now. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the reality of his power, his grace and his love must find expression in the midst of his people here and now. I believe in the supernatural I believe in the miraculous. I believe in the power of God. Number four, very quickly. The fourth thing to expect in an atmosphere like this is impartation. What is impartation? Impartation is a mystery in the Bible. The system for transferring spiritual possibilities from one person and one region to another is called impartation. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. That every time God invests grace upon one person is to the intent that it reaches a people. That he sent a word to Jacob, but the intention is that it will light upon Israel. In Romans chapter 1, when you read from verse 10 and 11, he was saying, he made a statement that was very instructive. Romans chapter 1, in fact, when you start from verse 9, Romans, it says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. And then he says, Making request, if by any means now at length, I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Why? 11. For I long to see you, he says, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. It takes more than the salvation experience to be a witness indeed. You must be empowered by the Spirit. Is that true? 
Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, He never said you will be preachers. He never said you will be businessmen. He never said you will be politicians. Those things just define the geography of your assignment. In the mind of God, we are all together called witnesses. A witness is the validator of a claim. Are we together? You will be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And this is not limited to just a group of people. Acts chapter 2, when you read verse 39, I believe, it says this promise. Acts chapter 2, I believe it should be. The promise is unto you, say unto me, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord shall call. And the fifth, very quickly, what should you expect in an atmosphere like this? Number one, encounters. Two, transformation. Three, miracle signs and wonders. Four, impartation. And number five, fellowship. There is a mystery that happens when believers come together under a corporate anointing. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is, the Bible says, when brethren dwell in unity it now likens it to the oil verse 2 that flows upon the head of Aaron the priest to his bed to his garment and then verse 3 the Bible says even like the dew of Hammon for there in that gathering God had commanded the blessing that means no matter how anointed and great you are there are things you cannot receive in isolation there are dimensions of God that can only be experienced when we come together. Are we together now? And so tonight, having this at the back of your mind, I want to take the few minutes that I have to share something that I believe. Number one, it's been a burden in my heart. And I believe that this is consistent with the cry of the Spirit as revealed to His Eminence, the Archbishop. I want to share something that is, is a very deep mystery in the Spirit. And I pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, that our eyes will be open to see and to access this light. Hallelujah. When it comes to this kind of gathering, ladies and gentlemen, please listen carefully. You will need more than intellectual prowess to understand the things of the Spirit. In Isaiah, I believe, 29 and verse 11. Let me show you a mystery and then we'll begin our teaching. Can you see it projected? It says, the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Not closed, sealed. So the book can be opened and yet it is sealed. It says, listen, which men deliver to him that is learned, educated, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Why? Not because it is not open, it is sealed. Next verse. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. And he said, I cannot even read this because I am not learned. So there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned would have to depend on the rabbi, the wisdom of God for illumination. Are we blessed tonight? Yes. The things of the spirit are beyond the realm of science and sociology. These are realities that may not make sense to the natural and the carnal man. But these are mysteries that empower us to rise, even in light. Hmm. Let me begin my teaching now. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6. Silaski parandu siyata. Shali parakato siyata. Listen, I want you to be very sensitive as I teach because I sense a very strong anointing and one of the things that I sense the Holy Spirit doing, listen carefully, 
one of the things that I sense the Holy Spirit doing as I'm teaching now is, is like an initiation. He's drawing people into a realm where you encounter the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Just help those under the anointing as we teach. Hallelujah now. Please don't be distracted with all of this. The manifestations will happen, but just pay attention to what I'm saying. So as the Holy Spirit speaks to me, then I will communicate that word, but will continue our teaching. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing a vision now, and I'm seeing the number 24. And the Spirit of God is telling me that there is grace coming on 24 people. Just sit down. Right now, the power of God is coming on them. 24 is a manifestation of grace. The spirit of revelation. I stretch my hands and I declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic in the name that is above all names, I decree and I declare let there be the opening of that gate upon these ones. Step into that realm and drink of this ancient fountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Shadigadeshadebatoskatilakata. Mede Baratusia, the opening of the eyes. Shinas Kabadi Kataliata. Grantes Kate Badida Kataya. Berando Shekete Pakata. Skatipari Kate and Skatebakatos. Krito Sidata. Rise in the spirit to a new height and a new dimension. Rise in the spirit. Please sit if you can. Please sit if you can. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Let's trust God for grace to do something tonight. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, he says, And ask for the old paths, Wherein is a good way. He says, And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. I'm teaching tonight on spiritual patterns. Spiritual patterns. Please pay attention. Now listen very carefully. God is a God of patterns. The first revelation of this reality is in Genesis chapter 4. Please give us Genesis chapter 4, the first seven verses. This was an encounter with the sons of Adam and Eve. It says, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived. Please bring for me two people, two ladies now that will shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. Loud under the anointing by the Spirit of God. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. We will praise our night. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, pray not. The Lord is telling that lady that I'm rolling away the reproach. I'm rolling away the reproach. Listen to me. God is rolling away that reproach. And in the name of Jesus Christ, even under this grace, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare that everything that has tied you hitherto that will not let you go under the influence of the grace of His eminence we decree and declare it drops down right now. It drops down right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. We are looking at Genesis chapter 4. So Adam knew his wife and conceived. She bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Please sit if you can. Verse 2. The Bible says she also bore Abel and that Cain was a tiller of the ground. 3. And in the process of time, follow carefully. The Bible says Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel brought of the firstling of his flock. And the Lord had respect unto his offering. 5. But Cain and unto him and his offering, the Bible says that God did not have respect. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Here is the lesson. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. If thou doest well. That means if you offer that sacrifice according to the prescribed pattern, would it not be accepted? But now that you have not done well, you will be frustrated and sin. All kinds of sin. Bitterness, jealousy, frustration. Are we together now? So God is a God of patterns. Let me define a spiritual pattern for you. A pattern is a prescribed methodology. A pattern is a modus operandi. A system of operation that guarantees predictability. Listen carefully now. A pattern is a prescribed or authorized methodology. A pattern also means the correct way things are done. So God is not just the God of the universe. He is the God of patterns. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable results. Results that can be reproduced again and again and again. And listen to me. We want to contend, especially in this conference, for realms and dimensions in the spirit where we will evolve from spiritual amateurism and get into mastery. And the Bible, Paul speaking, says, He that strives for mastery, he says he is not crowned except he strives lawfully according to patterns. Now, listen, in the dealings of God with men, we are not at liberty. To invent our strategy for knowing him and accessing spiritual realities. There is already a predefined pathway. Our assignment is not creativity. Our assignment is discernment and obedience. Are we together now? It is when it now has to do with spiritual legislature in the cosmos. That is when we need creativity. But as far as it has to do with dealing with God... Creativity is not a requirement. You need discernment and then to obtain the grace to walk in keeping with the terms that guarantee the results. If you are with me, please say Amen. So, we have a lot of believers. Here is the dilemma. We have a lot of believers who are sincere, born again. They've encountered God as far as the salvation experience is concerned. But they are never able to evolve to a point where they become efficient in their Christian experience. And the missing link is they do not understand the spiritual patterns that guarantee the manifestation of the glory. Now, this is a very important word. The word glory has many expressions in the Bible, but two of them are very important for our discussion tonight. It comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. The root expression of glory means the essence and the weightiness of a person or a thing. Are we together now? So when you say the glory of God, please look up. Let me have your attention. When you say the glory of God, it's an attempt to describe everything that makes God, God. You would have to break the dimensions of God into various components to understand His glory. His goodness is a subset of His glory. His mercy, His favor. These are all dimensions that make up the glory of God. Now please look up. Every need of the believer 
Every need of the believer is captured in one expression. The desire to see your life become an effulgence of the glory of God indeed. Are we together now? The Bible says that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Jesus teaching in his mentorship session that we call theologically speaking the Beatitudes. Helping them to be accustomed to the ways of the kingdom. And he said you are the light of the world akin to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a lampstand but they put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the room then he says let your light permit that light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father so god wants to be glorified in the life of the believer are we together now John chapter 15 and verse 8. Jesus was still teaching and he said, Herein is our Father glorified. That means this is how God is glorified. When ye bear much fruit, say results. One more time, shout it, say results. That means when your life commands the results that represent God in truth, you bring glory to the name of the Lord. Then you get to a point where Galatians 1 and verse 22, 24 becomes a reality in your life and they glorify God in me. God desires to be glorified in and through my life. That means through the dexterity and the excellency of my pursuit of God, my Christian experience, my conformity to the image and the character of the Christ and then my, my, my comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. By the time I am able to use this truth to produce results, it brings glory to the name of the Lord. My assignment tonight is that by this revelation, to push you out of the realm of spiritual barrenness, to a level where your life begins to glorify Christ in experience. Are we together? So generally speaking, when you command results in any area, listen carefully. That means the glory of God has manifested in that area. And every time you see the glory of God manifest, it is proof that His patterns have been kept. The patterns of God forerun His glory. Please pay attention. The patterns of God forerun His glory. You will never see the glory of God manifest in a life, in a church, in a region, in a nation, until and unless his patterns are kept. Failure to adhere to divine patterns is why so many believers continue to wallow and grow in darkness, well-meaning, well-intentioned people, but whose lives are never able to reveal the fullness of the beauty and the glory of God. Walk with me. Exodus 25 verse 9. This was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. I want us to understand the construct of this because the Bible says the things that are written aforetime, it says they are for our learning so that we to the patience and comfort of scripture might find hope. It says according, God is giving Moses the blueprint if you want to build a tabernacle that will host my glory, then you have to subscribe to the dimensions that I will give you. You're not going to build what you want arbitrarily and then allow me to come and stay there. No. Now, oh dear, I wish I had the time. Listen. Generally speaking, this is not just a principle um, in the kingdom. It is a spiritual principle. Every time you want to transfer a spirit from its current place to any other place, there is a protocol. You will have to reproduce the atmosphere where that spirit is currently in. So that when it translocates to another place, it will not even feel any difference. Let me explain to you what I mean. People use this in sorcery and witchcraft and all of that. When someone goes to meet a herbalist or a sorcerer, wanting to conjure a spirit and transfer that spirit to another region, the herbalist 
has sustained the spiritual intelligence to replicate the atmosphere where that spirit is. And by divination, he's able to replicate that atmosphere. The moment the spirit finds an atmosphere that is a replica of where it is, it can live there and come to that region. Are we together? Do you know that that was the exact same thing God did with your heart for the Holy Spirit to be comfortable dwelling in you? So that whether the Holy Spirit is in heaven or he is in the heart of the believer, it is the same. Because the sacrifice of Christ had prepared that atmosphere for the Spirit to be able to dwell. Now listen, if this is true for salvation, that means if you can reproduce the pattern that attracts restoration, you will see it manifest. If you can reproduce the pattern that attracts wealth and prosperity in the kingdom, you can reproduce it. If, if you can reproduce the pattern that attracts the anointing, any dimension of it, you will find it manifest. My assignment now is to teach you. Exodus 25, verse 9. According to all that I showed thee, listen carefully, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Go to verse 40. He's giving Moses this instruction now. 25 verse 40, 40, 40. He says, and look, he's warning him again, that thou make them after their pattern. That means... The tabernacle in the wilderness was not just an act of creativity. It was a download of something that was already existing in heaven. And he says, if it is my glory that you want to see there, you have to use my patterns. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 16. Let's hurry up. Exodus 40 and verse 16. Thus did Moses, how? According to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Now go to verse 33. And you'll see something that will surprise you now. Do you know that while they were building the entire tabernacle, God kept watching and his glory never came. Until the last peg was hit according to pattern. The Bible says, and he read up, he's finishing the construction now. He read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court and the gate. Please read the last sentence with me if you are a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. So Moses finished the work. He finished according to pattern. Next verse. Then, only after the pattern was kept, now a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And Moses was not even able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. If it happened for the tabernacle, it can happen for your life. It can happen for your finances. It can happen for your children. There is a pattern for salvation how do we know that you are saved by checking what pattern you followed are we together now the only way we know you are saved is if you can tell me what spiritual pattern can you imagine that there are about 2.6 billion professing christians on earth today and we call ourselves believers. Why? Because all of us without fail subscribe to the same pattern. What is the pattern allocated for salvation? Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 12. For instance, that if you want to encounter Jesus as Savior, this is the spiritual pattern that brings that dimension of God to you. Are we, are we together now? That the word is nigh the in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So that is the manifestation of God's glory tied to that pattern. Verse 10. 
For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That means if you tell me you are saved, I have no right to doubt your salvation, but I'm going to ask you, what happened to you? If I see that you do not honor the pattern, you are not saved. It's as simple as that. Are we together? There is a pattern for spiritual growth. You can't tell me you are growing. I will check the pattern. If I see what pattern you are keeping. Listen, I came from where the beautiful hotel where we were kept to this place. Did you know that there is an exact road from where I am lodged to this place? Is that true? And that anybody who follows that road will arrive at Action Chapel here. Am I right on that? So, if you tell me you are coming to Action Chapel, it does not matter where you are. My assignment is to show you the road that leads you to the church. If I call you and you say you are going opposite it, I can tell you without being prophetic that you will not get there. By the spiritual intelligence of your violating certain patterns, I can predict the outcome. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. The ministry of prayer, the ministry of the word, the ministry of mentorship that provides a sound exegesis of doctrine. The course curriculum that builds the believer to be matured in Christ is called doctrine. comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a predefined body of truth that makes an individual to become something exact. Doctrine. Listen, listen, listen. There is a pattern for building your faith. If you tell me I want to build my faith, all I need to do is introduce you to the pattern allocated for building your faith. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says faith cometh. So faith is alive. It can come. Before it comes, it means it's not there. It can come. There can come a time you can say, I have faith. Faith cometh. How does it come? Number one, the hearing that produces awareness and the hearing that produces understanding. It comes by two kinds of hearing. Number one, the hearing that produces awareness. Then number two, the hearing that produces understanding. There is a pattern for accessing the anointing. If you desire the anointing, there is an exact spiritual pattern. Here's how the Bible puts it. I have found David, my servant. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't assume you know the scripture. He found David a long time, but it took many other years to find his servant in David. I found David. But the dealings that transformed David to become my servant, the anointing is on my servant. I have found Joshua Selman. But it can take 20 years to find my servant. But when I find my servant, then he's ready for my holy oil. The oil is not for David. The oil is for my servant. And the condition, listen, you want to access the anointing for instance, the price is death. The anointing is not a gift. The anointing is a reward. Are we together now? There is a pattern for activating favor, for instance. Favor as cheap as it sounds. is not arbitrary. There is a pattern. Proverbs 13, 15 is the spiritual pattern for activating favor. Good understanding, the Bible says, gives birth like a mother into a child. The name of the child is favor. And it says transgression is also like a mother. It gives birth to a child. The name of the child is hardship. Transgression means a violation of patterns. Are we together? There is a pattern for building a church like this. Magnificent assembly, magnificent people having influence over people like this. It does not just happen. There is a spiritual pattern. What is the pattern? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men, not to the man of God, to myself.
There is a pattern for building and maintaining relationships. The Bible says, he that desires friends must first show himself friendly. There is a pattern for influence. When you want to rise to a level of influence, there is a spiritual pattern you must subscribe to. You find that in the life of Joseph. You find that in the life of Esther. Combining these two personalities, you find the key for influence as diligence and favor. For Joseph, it was diligence. Not just the ability to interpret dreams. No, that was not what gave him nobility and honor. It was the ability to provide solutions. He said, let the king seek for a man. And this and that and that and that and the king searched and immediately he was promoted. For Esther, we see that the secret for her lifting was found in chapter 2 of Esther. The B part of 15 and then verse 17. The Bible says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Go to verse 7. It says she obtained favor also. The Bible says the king loved Esther. Verse 17, 2 verse 17. The king loved Esther more than all the virgins. And he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So when you come to me and you say, man of God, I desire influence. I will expose you to the grace that makes for competence and the grace that makes for favor. You have found the key for influence. Now listen to me. When I came here yesterday, I had the honor and the privilege of going around this magnificent facility. And then uh, part of the tour was your, your, your clinic, very beautiful clinic. And I met a few of your doctors and with, 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 with the mastery of a professional, they began to discuss certain seeming complicated issues. And I could see how cheap they were discussing it. And I said, that's my message competence listen when you meet a doctor the doctor does not tell you opinions he has spent six seven eight maybe ten years learning patterns that's all he went to school for that means if you tell the doctor i have a runny stomach i have headaches beyond the frailty of your words he's searching for patterns it is from the patterns he can say this is wrong with you sometimes he may have to draw your blood but the, the, the recommendation he gives you happens only when he can get the pattern. So he went to school and professors and intellectuals taught him the connection between sicknesses and patterns. That there are diseases that function in similar ways. Is that true? When the COVID-19 broke out and all of that you know we began to labor so much investing millions and billions of dollars searching for patterns because it is from the patterns that vaccines can be developed am i right on that and every time there are variations another study comes say patterns very important if i can see what is wrong with your christian experience today the only way i will help you is by checking what spiritual pattern you are violating and to open up light to you. If it is lack of finances, I can tell you with, with the mastery of a surgeon that this might be what you are doing wrong. If it is that your spiritual life is taunted and you are not growing, then I know what you might be doing wrong. Because the moment you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer and you ignore the ministry of the word when you ignore the ministry of corporate gathering and fellowship you do not submit yourself to doctrine like acts chapter 2 and verse 42 says it says that they submitted themselves to the doctrine acts chapter 2 and 42 the doctrine of the apostles and of breaking of bread and of fellowship prayers these are the patterns they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine fellowship breaking of bread, prayer, and they became a mighty army. So if something is wrong with your spiritual life, listen, if you understand my teaching today, 
you can easily help people because the moment you see people crying what they are telling you spiritually they are revealing to you what pattern they are ignoring because the moment you see the absence of the glory of god in a life or a family it is because god is waiting for honor to the patterns that attract his glory You only succeed in the kingdom when you build according to pattern. If you do not build according to pattern, you may never truly succeed in the kingdom. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. We we'll find somewhere to pray. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the key expression is not the house it is upon the rock hmm. 25 the rain descended the Bible says and the winds blew upon that house and it fell not why it was not because it was a building it was the pattern that it was built upon the house was founded upon a rock. 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. What is his foolishness? He built. So the architecture is not the mistake. It is the pattern. He built upon sand. 27. The same thing that happened to the man on the rock, Happened to this same man. No difference. But the Bible says, It fell and great was the fall of it. You want to see a revival and the move of God in Accra, Ghana as a contribution to what God is doing across the globe? We must become like spiritual archaeologists. The secret to the future is in the past. To find out what patterns were kept by the patriarchs. What did they keep? What made God to do business with them in such a mighty way? I had the honor and the privilege of visiting the prayer mountain that God is building for himself even through the hand of his eminence. And I was awestruck by the, the magnificent demonstration of the power and the grace of God. When I saw that right there, I said, Ghana, this is it. You have found something very ancient. Listen to me. It is true. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your hands. When Jesus walked upon the earth, you would think everything would just work for him because he was Jesus. No. He was our pattern man. So, he submitted himself to everything to show us the blueprint on how to emerge and to be able to serve the purposes of God with efficiency. I hope you know that Jesus was born the Word. And even though he was born the Word, nothing happened in his life because he had to submit to the various patterns. Pattern number one, he was taken to the temple and he met two strange people. One called Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet. Those people who stood as a twofold cord, they spoke and blessed him. Jesus, the word. Why would the word need anybody to bless him? But that is a spiritual protocol. And then at age 12, when his contemporaries were running up and down, 
like he was in his father's house, learning and sitting under mentorship. It was on the strength of what he had learned that he challenged Satan when he came. Now watch this. For 18 years from age 12, the Bible does not tell us anything again about Jesus. The next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old man coming to be baptized by this mysterious prophet who is called John. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. Because while he was in the wilderness with locusts and wild honey, certain revelations were given to him that every time you baptize, look up. Whoever you see the heavens open over. You see that now? Listen. So, John would baptize and look up. You can go. John would baptize and look up. You can go. Suddenly, this 30-year-old gentleman stands before him. And John prophetically says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Listen carefully. And John now says, With respect to what I have seen, I am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoes. Here is a lesson for all of us. Jesus said, Suffer it to be so. In other words, this is an ordinance. It's a pattern. You are the leading voice. Can you imagine that Jesus as the word of God walked under a closed heaven for 30 years? As the word. As the word, his own heavens were closed. It took John. The Bible says, when John baptized him, as he came out of the water, your Bible says his heavens were open. And God spoke and said, this is my beloved son. My question is, what was he before? My beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now listen. There was a verdict from that encounter. And then the encounter at the transfiguration. He said, hear ye him. That was not just a statement to those who were listening. He was telling creation that this code has been hit correctly. That means anywhere he goes within that territory, let the sea, the waters, all the elements should cooperate with him because the Father had made a verdict. Hear ye him. On account of that verdict, he went to the mountain and men came. He went to the sea and men came. Everywhere he went, because there was a command, hear ye him. Hear me. Thou businessman, where is the voice that said, hear ye him? Otherwise, just because you have a mall does not mean Ghana will hear you. No. Patterns. There is a spiritual pattern that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when Jesus came, you would think that the Father, being almighty, would just use a verdict. As powerful as God is, He did not cast sin out of man. As mighty as God is, able to do everything, you would think He would just cast sin out of man. He submitted Himself to the patterns that make for His substitutionary sacrifice. Can I tell you this? Those that God will use in this end time, before he returns, will be men and women who through the labor of the word and the spirit would have submitted themselves to high level spiritual intelligence to understand the handwriting on the walls, the patterns. The patterns that lead to predictable spiritual outcome. There is a pattern that keeps a territory open for the purposes of God. The Bible lets us know that that pattern is the priesthood ministry of spiritual legislature through prayer and intercession. You see that happen. That any territory that does not subscribe to the ministry of prayer and intercession cannot keep the heavens over that territory open. In the days of Daniel, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians were manipulating men to succumb to counsels that were anti-God. But there was one man who happened to also be in the parliament. 
and he understood this priesthood ministry and single-handedly kept the heavens over Babylon open. Listen, when the devil wanted to afflict them, they scanned and found out that there was only one thing they needed to do. Find a way of using political power to stop that pattern of prayer for only 30 days. Satan does not need one year. Only 30 days of a compromise to that pattern. And it's enough for him to take not just a family, a region. That means when the devil attacks your destiny, he does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks the grace upon you to walk in keeping with patterns. This is how the devil destroys men. He does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by destroying you so that you lose sight of or you lose the discipline to walk in keeping with spiritual patterns. Let me tell you this. For as long as you find the patterns allocated for exact spiritual outcomes and you keep them, your life will be invincible. You will marvel and wonder at the predictability of your results. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you now? Listen to me. Many of you have come here. Some of you are pastors of assemblies. Some of you are business people. Some of you are captains of industry, politicians, members of parliament. Listen to what I'm telling you. For every spiritual outcome that you desire is called an impact conference. You don't just advance because of desire. It takes more than desire. It takes your submission to spiritual patterns. I found this in my life and I said this is it. The ministry of the word and the spirit opening me up to the various spiritual patterns that are responsible for bringing certain outcomes. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. For many of you here, the mantle for the next apostolic and prophetic move over Ghana and the entire sub-Saharan Africa. You are really part of that army, but not this version of you. This version of you cannot do anything much. The, the plethora of ignorance, the devil will hit you once. You surround yourself with patterns, mysteries like chariots. This is how you become mighty with God. And Jesus himself knew what to do. Now here's the question as we attempt to pray. If the devil afflicts your children now, do you know what to do? Not, not random guessing spiritual things. Look up. This is what happens to us believers. Because of the high level of ignorance and lack of mastery. And I say it not, not as a communication of sarcasm. Just help those under the anointing. Listen. Did you know that the average believer does not know what dimension of light and pattern leads to whatever outcome. So for instance, if I find out now that I'm being oppressed by demon spirits, chances are that I will pray a prayer like this. The blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire, a seed, touching and agreeing. I don't even know which one leads to what results. I just random guess any one of them. And the danger is that one will walk. And because you do not know which one led to which one, there is no mastery in your spiritual experience. Are we together now? So, we do not know that the various dimensions of results and possibilities in the kingdom have spiritual patterns allocated to them. Not, this is a beautiful auditorium with many rooms. Am I right on that? Do you agree with me that every room has a key that opens it? Now, you can hold a bunch of keys on your hands. You are holding keys. They are all called keys. But you can't just use any one for any door. No. There are doors that you may need to swipe a card, not insert a key. That is the protocol for opening the door. You violate it, a tiny key can keep you outside for a whole day. A key that you put in your pocket and yet that key has the power to keep you outside. You can cry as anointed as you are. You still remain outside. The door will not respond to tears. It will respond to the key.
there is a pattern that when you find, there will never be delay in your life again. It's not just a prophetic word. It is true. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and Elijah ran on bare foot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. What is that mystery that can accelerate men? Have you found it? Do you know it? Can you teach your children? The proof of mastery is that you can teach without ambiguity. Anything you cannot explain, you have not gained mastery over. Many years ago, I had a vision. I would close with this tonight. I had a vision. Please listen carefully. And in that vision, I saw a giant door. Looked like an ancient door. Very ancient door. And I was zoomed into that vision. And I found out that that door had many smaller doors. You know how... Um, the post office used to be I don't know how you, you know those small boxes that make up beautiful and it was opening and closing in the vision every small door that opens light will come out of it and then it will close open again and I noticed that on all of the smaller doors on every small door there was one scripture written and that was when the Holy Ghost taught me the relationship between the anointing and the word listen carefully that for every revelation you truly catch as a revelation, there is a grace component represented by that light that enters you. It empowers you to validate that truth you claim to know. That means any truth you claim to have found without the grace component to validate its reality is not yet life in you. The church is full of, respectfully speaking, I don't mean this to be sarcastic, but the church is full of empty bragging. We talk about so many things we cannot defend. Oh, God is here. God can heal the sick. God can raise the dead. We say those things. Now, when it is time to make it happen, we quietly share the grace and go away. That's why you should thank God for platforms like this. Listen, the Christian experience was never supposed to be heard alone. It was supposed to be heard and seen. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria, the Bible says, and he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. Read with me, please, if you are a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. It says, and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Uh -huh. Hearing and... One more time. Hearing and... You don't just hear alone. You hear and see when God is at work. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. What were the miracles? Next verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. And many who were taken with palsy that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. A time came in my life where I was frustrated with the religiosity of church, not from a sarcastic standpoint. I read my Bible. I read books that were written by men and women. Listen carefully. And every time I went to church, respectfully speaking, I had a lot of spiritual propositions about what God could do. I had songs by the worship teams. They sang songs about his power. They sang songs about his grace. They sang songs about revival. They sang songs about the Holy Spirit. And yet I watch sick people in that meeting go back sick. I watch oppressed people go back oppressed. I watch people who were sincere and well-meaning, buffeted by Satan left, right and center. And I said, something has got to be wrong. Let God be true. And all men liars. Now listen to me. I began a pursuit that had no plan B of return. I said I would have to find out what was the secret that the ancient knew. What did our fathers find? 
What business did they do with God that gave them authority over nations? Men who spoke like God upon the earth. They commanded dimensions of power. Read the Bible. They called Paul and Barnabas, Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. That these men, when you read their archives, in Hebrews 11, it says, Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. And I was watching a generation that was losing something very ancient and powerful. And I knew that if we are to see his kingdom come again over nations, over territories, the world is tired of our talk. The world is tired of our stories. The world is tired of our excuses. Hear me. As darkness looms across the horizon of Africa, Europe, America, all across. Romans chapter 8 from verse 8 and 9, 18 and 19 now becomes a reality. It says, for I reckon, 8 verse 18 and 19, I reckon it says that the sufferings, the constraints that you're training, the sufferings of this present time, he said, they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. 19 says, the endless expectation of the Creator, he says, it waited for the manifestation, not the explanation of the sons of God. Listen to me. The Bible says, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we be called the sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. The church has almost looked like a nuisance to civilization. There are nations and territories today that see the church as an interruption to civilization. But there is a generation that is saying, no more. No more. No more. No more. That a people will arise by the Spirit and the fire of God. This was my hunger, Akragana. It drove me to search for God. Days became weeks, weeks became months. And I said, if I did not find Him, I would rather die. There is a desperation, the Bible says, through desire. Proverbs 18.1 A man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all knowledge. Listen, there is the law of encounter. You never encounter God until all of you cry for all of you. This casual, lukewarm, careless Christianity here and there that sees God as an option to just be added that can be done without. You will never find God that way. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That means if you search and you do not find him, dear prayer warrior, dear prospective apostle and prophet, the diagnosis is that all of you is not seeking him. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. And through my life, this is my song. Be lifted forever. and we're done one night I was lying down flat on the ground crying before his majesty I was not looking for fame I was not looking for money I was not looking for ministry I was not looking for titles I was not looking for his hand I wanted his heart and 
and his face. Therein lies the mistake of our pursuit. If you are a co-laborer and a servant of God here, let me beseech you by the mercy of God. If your pursuit is just for power or fame or titles, you have missed it from the beginning. Even if you do a hundred days fasting, the corruption of the state of your heart will veto your spiritual experience. You will not find God. It takes a pursuit that is sincere. And that night, while I lay down there, a stranger walked into my room. There he stepped in, the one whom my heart longed for, the one who I could live and die for, the one who preachers spoke about and yet do not know him. When he walked, Jesus, he was no longer a memory verse. He was no longer a song upon the lips of a skilled singer. Listen to me. The day I saw Jesus Christ, I knew that many people do not know him. I know today people claim they see Jesus. It's not for me to judge them, but believe me. If you see the Jesus I saw, it will take you more than one year to be back to yourself. Are we learning something? When he... How he entered my room, I do not know. How the door opened, how he got in there, I cannot explain. And now I'm lying down and I'm looking at the ancient of days. Not an angel. Ah. The longing of my heart. Ministry personified. I could gaze on any part of him forever and not be tired. Believe me when I tell you that. It's not like men that you look at my shoe after one minute, you're tired, you want to look at something else. Any part of him. It was when I encountered Jesus that I knew that you do not have to talk to speak. No. He was communicating with me, yet his mouth was not opening. Jesus. Majesty. Your majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. Your majesty, majesty, forever I am changed by your love, in the presence of your majesty, the hallmark of the experience was when His Majesty stretched His right hand towards me. Listen, let me attempt to describe it for you before we pray. Imagine taking the sun and putting it inside an ant. That was what happened. How I survived it is what I will ask Him the day I see His face again. That light at its brilliance, how that light entered into me, I cannot begin to explain. Listen carefully. From that encounter, by the next time I opened my Bible, there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. Things I did not study. What is the meaning of this? From whence cometh this illumination? Elihu said, There is a spirit in man, and that the breath of the Almighty. The breath of the Almighty is able to make men of understanding. And in one other encounter that I had with him, he now said, My son, from this day, I give you my presence as a gift. And then I'm seeing this angel standing before me. And he said, This angel will walk with you. 
I said, what is his name? And he said, he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. This is why you see and hear these manifestations. I explain this thing to you so you don't confuse what we are doing with superstition. No. Hear me. Please, whatever you do, do not miss tomorrow. If you will call the whole of Ghana to come here, if there is no space, sit on the roof. Hear me, because we may not have time tonight, but let me tell you this. He left me with an instruction, and he said, to every nation and every territory that I will send you to, that light that came from you to me, there must be someone in that meeting that that light must be transferred to them. This is why you see some of these manifestations. Tonight we may not have the time to pray for the sick and to speak. Tomorrow I'll have the time to tell you how I got into the prophetic. But learn this tonight. Midwifing your desire and your experience are spiritual patterns. Prayer is a spiritual pattern. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Not men who are doing well or men who are not doing well. Men. God never prayed. But when he became a man, he prayed. And since he went back to heaven as a man, he's still praying. All men pray. They don't pray because things are bad. It is a pattern allocated to authorize heaven. Hear me. Scattered in this auditorium are men and women. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these veterans of the gospel before they went to be with the Lord. All in such, I wanted to hear this transference of mantles. What were they told? What heritage do we have to preserve? So that we become faithful stewards of this grace. For the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Ghana, this conference is more than a conference. I have come in the spirit of Gideon to shout the shofar. And the Bible says that when Gideon sounded that alarm, 32,000 people heeded the alarm and they came. Because there is the prophetic birthing of something God is doing in Ghana. I can tell you this by the Spirit. Ghana, hear me. A season is coming to an end. And a new season is opening up. It is a Kairos moment in the Spirit. I tell you this as touching the visions of the Spirit. There will be an emergence. It will start from your campuses. It will start from non-denominational prayer groups. God will begin to raise ordinary men and women. Ministries that have no name. They will just pray and pray until they evolve into the prophetic counsel of God. The spirit of revival and the move of God will move across your parliament, move across schools, educated and uneducated, all together because a season is coming to an end. The Bible says, and the sons of Isaac who had an understanding of the time. You must learn how to read the writings of the world. Therefore, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I sound that shofar over Ghana. Arise in the name that is above all names. I speak to the spiritual climate by the privilege of access to this altar. In the name that is above all names, we open up the vistas by the Spirit. We sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. Maranatha, come revival. Maranatha, 
Come the grace of prayer. Maranatha. Come the move of God. Maranatha. Come men of fire. The Boras. Arise. Elijah. Arise. Samson. Arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute, I want you to begin to pray in the spirit as we wrap up. Kabantas katabakata, shanika tebete, embreke dos koto shalata. Where are the men who watch upon the wall? Stand upon your watch. Where your priestly regalia? Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. Just one minute and we're done. Go ahead. Paris Katina Tashkatabata. Parigate Katosko Toprendegedia. Where are the men and the women who know how to hold on to the horns of the altar? Ghana, I speak to you. A season is ending and another is beginning. Lift up your eyes and lift up your heads. Your salvation draweth near. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I want to plead if His Eminence will grant me that opportunity so that tomorrow will be a miracle and impartation service tonight. Where we will trust God to stir up ancient wells and ancient fountains. But for tonight, my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am The impartation you are receiving tonight is the spirit of prayer and supplication. Something will mantle you tonight. At the count of three, I want to release that grace and we wrap up. My God and His Majesty, the one I serve, I pray over men and women, young and old, across the length and breadth of Ghana, the overflows following online in the name that is above all names. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of Jesus and in honor to the grace upon his eminence. I decree and declare Ghana at the count of three. I want you to shout the name Jesus and let this mantle cloak you. The grace to travel until you shift climate. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that mantle. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night. Let this light on the heart of you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.